As we approach the festival of Purim, I want to share with you one really short insight. Our sages in the Gemara Masechet Megillah tell us something interesting. They tell us if we read the story of Purim, if we read or listen to the Megillah out of sequence for some reason, then we have not fulfilled the obligation of listening to the Megillah on Purim. This is strange because we don't see this anywhere else. On Pesach, on Seder night, we don't see the fact that if we tell the story out of order, out of sequence, that we haven't fulfilled it. Yes, there's an order to the Seder night. But if we tell bits of the story throughout the evening, we've still fulfilled the obligation. And Hanukkah and other places as well. But specifically with Purim, we have to read the story from chapters 1 to 10 in the order in which they appear, or we haven't fulfilled it. Why would that be? And I think I can suggest the answer with a really simple message. The one word, the one person that does not appear, as we know in the story of Purim, is God. Which means we have to use our special Purim glasses to be able to read the story, to see the story unfold with God's hand in it, every step of the way, even if we can't see it. And therefore, say our sages, we have to read the story in the order in which it appears, because otherwise it looks like a bunch of random events. We have to see that actually God is moving all the pieces around as an each time with very specific intentions. And therefore we have to realise, as everything happens, it's happening for a reason. And had it not have happened, then maybe the story would not have turned out in the way it did. Had, had the king Ahasuerus not moved his capital to Shushan, specifically where Mordechai was wandering the streets one day until destiny tapped him on the shoulder. And had he not have banished Vashti and killed her and so on and so forth, the stories with Esther and Haman and Mordechai, had everything not have happened the way in which it did happen, specifically as God was controlling all those pieces, the story wouldn't have ended, as it did, in such a positive way. Therefore, we have to read it in that order. And I'll finish with a quote by the well-known physicist Joseph Ford, who challenges Einstein. Einstein said that God doesn't play dice with the universe. He believed everything has a reason for the way it happens. Ford said no. God does play dice with the universe, except the dice are loaded. We have to use Purim to understand that we've been given a special gift with Purim glasses. Not just for the Purim story, but for our own lives as well. If we can see and understand that God is moving all the pieces around at the right place at the right time, it's as if he's giving us a hug and saying, I support you, I'm with you in every step of your journey through life. Please God we can see this. Please God we can have a meaningful Purim, happy and fun and festive, seeing the hand of God in everything which we do. I wish you a Purim Sameach.